One of the problems I have is, as you can tell, when this locked up, you can see fresh metal tore here, here, here. This ripped this pad out. Now, I, I've got to believe that as it was getting harder, the gate was stressing this metal in this, and finally, when this locked up, that gate opener is a very strong one. It just ripped it right off. If it was closing, it would have sensed the force and, and gone ahead and, and reversed the gate. But uh, anyway, I wasn't there. I don't know. The uh, problem is, is where this one was welded is now here. It's not on the gate anymore. So what I think I'm going to do, this will be the new piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one like this and weld it in here so that this piece is now on the inside of the gate. I can drill a hole through here and pin it inside with a bolt. It's a two inch piece of metal so I, if I only just take in like a drill a hole on top and a couple on the sides and plug weld through there I'm only just dealing with that one side and it may be enough, it may not be. But what I plan on doing is taking a drill and a hole through here, through hole it, and then when I get to the job I'll drill a hole in that same position, put a bolt through it, and then I can weld up around here to keep the, the water. Uh, I think that'll reinforce the joint and uh, make it to where it won't come off again. So, you got to make sure on these things the hole's a little bit off center. And people I know have before flipped this thing around, or was like that, and then tried to weld part on the gate and part off and went to open it and they couldn't turn it. So, when you're working with these, you got to make sure that you can get it here. That gives clearance for the turn. That's also the reason you can't put a lot of weld along the top in here, right through here, because then this will hit it. So, on the outside. And so, I need to make sure that this piece goes like this, and then this piece uh, probably go like this. Maybe. Yeah, I'd go like this. So we want these two surfaces together. Okay. Now I could just go ahead and weld in that little V and call it good, but I want a bigger V, so I'm going to grind that out. Got it kind of all ground out and ready to go. This is the piece that goes to the pin on this hinge. Remember I said you couldn't put very much metal in there because of clearances? I've also found that usually these pieces here, as they're rotating, don't have enough clearance on those corners. So I always grind them off so they have a little bit more clearance. And also, if you grind that edge there, it won't rub on any well or paint. So, you know, they usually get painted four or five times. And it builds up pretty good. Okay. Well, that's that. This surface here. We'll now, get attached to that. And put the weld in it.
I honestly wanted to try out my new TIG machine on it, but uh, I don't have faith in my TIGging uh, skills just yet for this application. I mean, I've got to drive 15 miles to get to the gate. If it breaks, I've got to drive another 15 miles there and back. So, with the TIG, I'll get there. Just got to take a little time. With my MIG, I can sit there and watch that puddle and I know it's blending in. I'm not just blindly shooting. Uh, I'm actually seeing the puddle melt and form together. I've never had a problem with MIG welds. You know, a lot of people badmouth them, say, oh, you can't do that. It's not good. Um, I've seen a lot of things MIG welded and if you do it right, it's a perfectly good application. So I try to do it right. I'm not the best. I didn't go to school. I don't know all the speeds and feeds down right. I've just had to try to practice and figure out what makes it work for me. All right. Have I told you in this video how much I love my new uh, helmet? You know, as you get older, it's, your eyes go away. And this thing is so clear. The technology in it has is, is made it to where I can actually see into that puddle again. Before I couldn't. It's a nice helmet. Alright. I might have to get you guys farther back. Well, I'm going to tack it, then I'm going to move. See what I was saying about that brownie clamp not doing great on this table. More than one way to skin a cat. Basically, I hurried up and got down into that well, down into that root, and I just put a cover patch on it. Got to grind it off so it can fit inside that post. Boy, it looks like a drunkard sailor laid that beam down. Got a couple of spots right over here that I'm going to fill in for a. Okay. I promise I'll do better on the next one. Kind of welding away from the camera so I don't mess it up.
probably be the last gas bottle this welder ever sees go through it. Uh, before we go out to the job, I'm going to switch it over to a uh, core shield wire, flux core, and then uh, I'm just going to leave it on the trailer for welding real thin metal that I run into a lot of times. Did all my uh, SV Seeker friends get the uh, nautical humor like a drunken sailor? Just for you guys. Oh, that's straighter. I went down into that and then came back up in a weave. And that ought to make it good. Let's get this piece here done. tip on my piece and it was arcing out. Okay. Just if you wanted to, it wouldn't really matter which side you put on. Well, I, I relieved these edges so we'll put that up there. Did I say it was hot? Alright. We're going to move you guys back out of the way so I can do some sparking. Turn off that uh, little uh, Miller machine so it doesn't make so much noise and uh, grind this off and then it'll be ready to go. Put my helmet over there. You guys watch it. Make sure nobody swipes it. It's turning out all right. I don't know if this and they're tight or not. Yep, get something better. And we don't need that one. So what I'm going to do is take it off. I'm assuming it's metric. And I'm going to give it to the man for a spare one. But first, I'm going to take and run this through the parts washer and uh, Make sure that any metal that I put in is, is flushed out. Glove here. Got it up there. Got a few little spots right in here, but there's so much weld in there that I don't think that's ever going to be a problem. And this piece here goes far enough in that we will be welding onto this area again. So I think it's cool. Well, got it all together again. 
getting ready to go over there and put it on. As you can see, I primed it with some bonding primer. Welded up through the back and everything. This just bolts onto the pieces that are there. It's just made a duplicate of this. This is the, the block I made of, of the regular hinge here. And let's see, this part here will disappear into the, uh, the hole that I'll show you. And I cross drilled it for a half inch bolt. And when I get there, I'll drill the hole in the gate, slide this in there, put the pin through it, weld it up, weld around it, Bob's your uncle. These kind of gates are pretty good hinges. They, they rely on this little ball, and a lot of times I find this ball is missing. And so the little ball sits right up here. A lot of times I take a little dab of grease and put on here, then just stick the ball on. And what it does is it keeps the correct distance between those two plates. So this, this one's fixed and welded together, won't go anywhere. This is how this swings. Ball out of it. I'll take the grease port and leave it out until I weld all this up and then I'll flush it again. And uh, I might just stick another grease art in it while I'm welding, keep junk out of there. That turned out pretty good. I think that's the best way I could have come up to repair that. As soon as the rain stops, we'll go out and uh, install it. Well, we're out here working on the gate now. That's where it got torn up. Got the new piece going to fit in there and we'll get started on it. Well, I didn't have time to film everything, but there's the gate put back in place and welded and primed. The owner's going to paint it. These are these hinge plates they make. Oops, didn't mean to knock you over. put this installation in about oh, two, two and a half years ago. Those plates I put on that hinge there uh, let the uh, gate be adjusted in three different planes so that you just, you know, when you're in poor soil like we have, things shift. Good looking gate. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Right now I'm on my way to go pick up something that the shop's been needing for years. My shop is located on a dead-end county road and it's very, very difficult for the big trucks to make deliveries. So I usually meet them at an uh, intersection close by uh, with a forklift and just forklift it back to the shop. Today, the surprise package uh, is small enough that we can uh, just break down the pallet and put it in the back of my truck by hand. So I'm meeting him at a truck stop about four miles away from the shop. I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah.
I wonder what's in that truck. 